Good morning guys, I'm driving through a nice subdivision in Wilmington called Landfall, we've been to a few times. Heading to the house that was in Amanaland, the original series. Um, and we're going to see one of the issues I think that is occurring with one of these Amana air handlers and across the board with a lot of these AVPTC air handlers. And one of the reasons why I don't like using them any longer. Guys, I'm in the crawl space here. This is the supply plenum. There's the Amana, as you see. A little bit of water on the outside. The supply plenum has a lot of water on the outside. It's very humid. There's no air actually escaping the plenum. It is just so humid underneath here. It doesn't take the dew point so high. It doesn't take that much of a drop in temperature to cause things to condense. This is an Amana modular air handler. I hear it's gone up to high stage now. You can hear the blower increasing speed. You can see some of the crap growing on the outside of it right up there. But it may just be a product of the crawl space. What I'm doing here, I think the blower board shorting out because of condensation on it. So we may need just to perhaps just seal this thing up completely, tape it, do whatever. We're going to see because I'm pretty sure that's what's occurring here. There's our supply probe in place. I'm going to go to the back of the air handler to that plenum. Put our return probe in place and then we'll have a little bit more information outside as far as what's going on inside the system. Here's our return probe, kind of sandwiched in there. That's the uh, return plenum right here in the back. This is a return drop for another system. This is the coil part of the modular air handler. So I'll go outside and check this out. All right guys, the system just started running. We have a subcooling of three, but that'll rise. We're just gonna monitor the system for a little while. Even though it says 49,000 BTUs, doesn't necessarily mean that's uh, what we're running at. Temperature splits a little high, but only about a degree off the target. Keeping in mind this is a communicating system that sort of sets itself up. You put it together, you turn it on, it recognizes the pieces and parts of the system and it configures itself. So we'll see how she does after running for about 10 minutes. This is about five minutes later guys. You see the superheat and subcooling have changed a little bit. Head pressure has risen, suction pressure has lowered. We're gonna let it run for about five or ten more minutes just so we get a good feel for how the system is performing. And then I can make a call on whether or not I think it's just the moisture in the cabinet or there's an issue with the system. Okay guys, it's been a while now. You can see we're off our targets a little bit. I'm gonna adjust the TXV just slightly, tighten it up, raise the superheat slightly, lower the suction pressure in the same doing that. And also that should raise the subcooling and the head pressure. So I'm gonna adjust there's that we'll come back to XV. Well, it's, you know, it's not good, but whatever it is, Emerson or whoever made it. We take the little cap off the bottom part there at the base of the TXV, it's hard to see. That leaves a little connection our service wrench will fit to. Looking from the bottom, we are going to tighten that to raise the superheat and raise the subcooling in the system as well as lower the suction pressure and raise the discharge pressure or liquid pressure, we'll say. We'll leave it at that for a minute, see how it does. Guys, keep in mind when we're doing this, you see the superheat's gone up, the suction pressure's gone down, the liquid pressure actually stayed pretty much the same. We're going to give it a few minutes to get balanced out again. We can't just um, wait a couple minutes, we have to give it five or ten minutes again, see where it's at, and then we can readjust it again, if needed. Alright guys, what I did was I reprofiled the system. I changed some of my targets, customized it, down to a 10 degree superheat, 9 degree subcooling, and we're a little bit closer to target. Now, what did I do to change those? I reprofiled it, and I was thinking to myself that the Goodman Amana 16 and 18 sear units are using the exact same condenser coil. The difference in their efficiency rating from 16 to 18 sear is, I believe, the outdoor fan motor being ECM and variable speed or just two speed between 16 and 18 sear. Correct me if I'm mistaken. So I made some adjustments here and I might not be quite finished adjusting but I think I'm pretty close. Let me know what you think. Should you use the stock profile or should you build your own profile based on what you think it should be? Because if they're both using the same condenser coil 
put a 16 and 18 sear, should you then put an 18 sear condenser or 16 sear? It's a good question. And not all systems will be like that. It would be a nice thing to hear from, from the authorities. Hear what they have to say about it. What do you guys think? Okay guys, we're pretty close on our numbers here. It's fluctuating within the uh, acceptable range. What I want to do is open this thing up and take a look inside and see how much condensation is on that communicating circuit board. So I'm going to go shut things down because I'm satisfied that the system's performance was not causing an issue. I think it comes from elsewhere. Air infiltration around the door. Goodman's kind of bad for having air get into their doors. They're not made with the, well, they're not the best quality seal on the doors. So I'm going to go upstairs, shut things down so we can open it up and take a look. We are looking inside the air handler. There's our legacy wiring block for those of you who do Goodman and Amana. As you see, the control panel is covered in condensation. Covered in condensation. And if we travel, because it's condensating on this side of the panel. If we go to this side, there's nothing there. Nothing at all. So what we can assume is that the heat is infiltrating into this area and causing the condensation. But this whole thing's covered in condensation. So I'm going to assume that the primary source is probably infiltration through the door. Let's take a look at the door and see if we can figure out why that would be. Now we have our door here, and what the, one of the first things you see is these large black deals right there. That's for potential heat strip breakers. Of course, we don't have any breakers on this heat strip. I rarely use heat strips that have breakers on them. There's a disconnect right behind the unit right there. We don't really need heat strips with breakers. But that thing tends to leak air. Air infiltrates through that hole. You can hear it whistling. And I'm going to go with that as one of the causes, as well as the door just being loose in general. I mean, Goodman doors aren't renowned for their tightness. We can seal it up with tape. That just makes it a pain in the butt to service, but it might be the only thing we can do. Uh, the board's also low to the ground down here, which means if enough water pulls up, it's going to short it out that way. Uh, I can put your water running down and dripping on the back side of the board and causing an issue, and I'm positive that's what's happening. I witnessed it with another AVPTC air handler that was running. Condensation pulled up behind the board, all of a sudden it cut out. The common thread is condensation. Everything was performing correctly. There was no issue in the system. Uh, what was happening on both units was extreme condensation. Another way we can combat this problem, we can actually move the board to the front wall of the air handler, put another piece of sheet metal there, sandwich it in place with a screw or two. Uh, just something because that's not going to sweat as much because that's not bordering a cold area. It borders the crawl space. So we could put it there. Uh, I'd like to seal up the air handler and leave it where it's at, if that will work. But we'll try to have to do trial and error with that and see if that will actually solve the problem. Close up those holes, any holes where the thermostat wire comes through, which are small. I believe I use rubber grommets there, so it shouldn't be too much. Double check the high voltage and make sure the Romex connector is nice and tight. But this is no different than most systems. This crawl space is very humid. So we're going to have to take extra precaution. I bleed for my money Day in and day out I try to give you The things you deserve Drop out Who gives his knee
falls in the tide line is washed out to sea. When I see the sunshine coming, I can feel you in my veins as I feel the day. Bye.